We have science. We have uh, a leading world scientist here with us tonight. We're privileged to have that. But I know, as also the trained scientist, that some of the greatest achievements in science were inspired by men and women of God who found their inspiration in the transcendent, in the sacred. And of course I can read off names. Avicenna, Ibn al-Haytham, quite rightly the father of modern science, centuries before Bacon. Bayrouni. Our scientific vocabulary is full of Arabic words. The word chemistry itself is Arabic. Algebra, logarithm, algorithm. Most of our named stars are Arabic. These were inspired by the Quran and by the Quranic emphasis on reflection, on reason. And of course in the West, Isaac Newton, Descartes, Copernicus, Galileo, Mendel, all the way through to mystical scientists like Einstein and Dirac, who accepted, in fact, promoted a, a mystical aspect of God. And we, and we mustn't, this is why we mustn't confuse, as our friend said, the issue of religion with the issue of God. Because there are so many interpretations of God. You know, there are theists, there are agnostics, there are deists, there are atheists, there are even agnostic theists, I discovered recently. There are many, many in interpretations uh, of, of God. And it's not, God is not a physical or natural object that we can uh, carry out scientific experiments to determine whether or not conclusively, objectively, God exists. And this is a basic logical fallacy which many, even of our greatest scientists, fall into when they use those kinds of scientific uh, empiricist arguments to uh, argue against the existence of God. Mm -hmm. 